Welcome to this class on the difference between myth and scripture. It's a difference that can be stated simply. Myths conceal the truth about violence and scripture reveals it. We are going to explore that difference using a powerful anthropological theory of human violence to examine two stories of fratricide, one from the Bible and one from Roman mythology. My hope is that by the end of the class, your faith will be enriched by a deeper understanding of the utter nonviolence of God as revealed in Scripture. Christianity has long endured critics who accuse it of meeting the dictionary definition of myth, an idea or a story believed by many, but that is not true. As evidence, they point to the bloody, violent mess in scene after scene in the Old Testament. God commands wars and genocide and destroys the entire earth in a flood, among other deplorable overreactions. Basically, there are corpses all over the Old Testament, and atheists are appalled to read that the death and violence are God's will. Perhaps that has made you squirm as well. Added to that are interpretations of the death of God's Son on the cross as a necessary condition for reconciliation to a sinful, violent humanity. What atheists intuit, despite their lack of faith, is that if there is a God, he would be nothing like the violent picture of him in the Old Testament or in Christian atonement theology. These critics point out that by comparison, myths seem much less bloody. Sure, the gods are a bit unpredictable, but the violence is not portrayed in such a graphic way. Mythical violence is fantastical and unreal, almost dreamlike, and a popular interpretation of myth strongly influenced by the fathers of modern psychology, Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud, sees myth as windows into the complex realities of the human psyche. In the 1980s, Joseph Campbell reinvigorated this approach through his evangelizing of mythology as truth. Campbell insisted that myth was not necessarily untrue, even though the events they describe are bizarre and unreal. Campbell said, mythology is not a lie, mythology is poetry, it is metaphorical. So according to these arguments, Mythological violence is more truthful than the biblical kind, but, as we will see, exactly the opposite is true. The confusion is understandable. What's been missing from this discussion is a coherent theory about the difference between myths and scripture that would help us answer the atheists, but more importantly, help us read our own sacred texts with more insight and wisdom. Because unfortunately, we often read scripture mythologically, and in so doing, we lend credibility to the atheist's argument. Now, Rene Girard, a historian, literature professor, and anthropologist, has articulated a clear difference between myth and scripture, one that bears directly on our ability to read and interpret the Bible and the necessity of the cross. Through a comprehensive cross-cultural study of ancient myths and rituals, Girard discovered that myths from around the world contain both the truth and a lie. It turns out that the psychologists and the atheists are each a little bit right. What they both completely missed, however, was what Girard discovered, that the subject of myth is violence itself. What Girard has allowed us to see is that myths originated in actual events of human violence, events that were misremembered by the community. Of course, the violence is never completely forgotten. Myths are filled with gods dismembering each other and eating their children or murdering their parents. There are corpses all over the place in myth too, and the gods are the culprits. But the truth that the violence is human and not divine is hidden so deeply in myth that it has been nearly impossible to recover. Now, Gerard believes that it is the Judeo-Christian revelation that has enabled us to see what myths want to hide. Our scriptures reveal a God who is concerned with the plight of the widow 
and the orphan, the slave and the stranger, the hungry, the sick and the outcast. These are the vulnerable who too easily fall prey to victimization and violence. Though they suffer at the hands of their fellow human beings, God hears their cries and is always on their side. Because our God is concerned with the truth about the violence we inflict on one another, we see its consequences portrayed quite graphically in our scriptures. Scripture does not want to hide the truth about violence. It wants us to see it clearly so we can deal it with it directly and honestly. Now we will see evidence of this incredible difference between the lies of myth and the truth of scripture when we examine two origin stories. But first let's dig a little deeper into Gerard's theory to understand the lie at the heart of myth the better able to understand the truth at the heart of our scripture. <laughs> 